But we're back in the Tourmaline Desert, same mechs as you said, but that doesn't mean that they can't play differently. So they got another good look at each other. Uh, we'll have to see if Eon decides to do something a little bit differently here to try and turn this one around in their favor. Still 2-1 on the series in favor of Imperial right now. You gotta wonder with that technical difficulty, you know, uh, could that have happened early off and on that it really did change, you know, the entire course of the match? It's of course impossible to say exactly what happened there, but we're gonna have to find out if Imperial can uh, clinch that win again and continue moving on in the winner's bracket. All right, we are dropping back in. We're over on the Imperial side yet again. And Hunchback, Marauder 2C, Dragon in the Summoner. Over in Alpha Lance. Already we're seeing a little bit of a different play here. Heimdall like going up aggressively. Now that they kind of know where they're set up between the two teams and how, what mechs they're bringing, they can play this a little differently. So Heimdall like moving up and he wants to get a lot of these early shots in on some of the mechs that are crossing the field. So Colonel O'Neill breaking away from that Alpha Lance. Looks like he's able to get across unscathed. Chico playing a little bit further back this time with Lizzie in tow and uh, definitely not crossing that open field like he did that cost him so dearly on that last one. But the difference here is there's an early Theta cap going on right now. One of the Wolfhounds for Eon Synergy sitting on Theta and they have control. A lot of fire. This seems like a really an increased amount of fire going back and forth between these two teams. Part of it might be because the uncertainty is not there anymore. Now that they know what, what uh, mechs they're bringing, they can all step forward and really start putting out the DPS. So a lot of, a lot of early shots, a lot of scratch so far. Uh, looks like members of both teams getting walloped. Some nice strikes going out there. Legless down to 94% in that night gear. Some of that back armor got stripped away, exposing his rear internals. And as we've talked about on this map, it's such a long range map that in this early engagement, good strike placement can make a huge difference because there's no range on the strikes. You can hit full damage across the map as opposed to most of your weapons at this point are doing scratch damage. You've got to get a lot of shots on target in order to do significant damage. Zelaglock playing down in the pit with his summoner. The pop tart, it's a pretty good place to pop tart though. He can jump out of the pit, take a shot, jump back in or fall back in. Looks like he's opting to leave that position though to get more and better options. He's on his way out, but he's gonna take a little bit of fire too, but he's got Hubert up over the top. Like I was saying before, one of the worst things is when they get somebody caught out in the open, not having someone there to just provide that covering fire, it really costs them dearly. This time, it seems like they're cleaning that up a little bit. And a little bit of a change from previous matches. Bowser is in his usual Overwatch spot, but instead he's taken a significantly amount more damage. He's actually open center torso right now, trying to peek from Delta 7 into Echo 6, but he's taken a lot of damage. Twinkie Overlord, he's moving up slowly towards that, uh, that rock wall there. Uh, he's still under cover, but he's getting closer and closer as he watches and waiting, waiting for somebody to peek out. Looks like we've got a bit of a movement here. Uh, the Wolfhound's moving up against Selith and that Huntsman who's got the streaks. Yeah, they need to be really careful there, taking too much damage. And Bowser is up high around the corner. He can get some shots in as well if they forget he's there. Drop the strike just to make him leave, but it looks like Theta is being capped. Here comes the Wolfhounds on Arara, 2v1 situation. They get the hit in, they stop the cap attempt, and Hardock going in pretty aggressively. Twinkie is right there to back him up though, and is that a leg on Arara? It is. It is a leg that is big. Let's see if they can disengage right now. But at the same time, Salith is there, and that Huntsman, he's gonna get some shots in if they're not careful, and there comes the streak. Salith, yep. That was a great play, getting the leg and then getting out before Selic was able to fully respond. He did get some damage downfield. Looks like he's still getting some hits on, on uh, Red, so they need to still play KG. But uh, Arara moving right back up to Theta, attempting to get that cap back. Hardock going hard, hard, uh, high, <laughs> trying to get the hit on him. But it looks like Arara is actually going to successfully. And this is get where you'd love back. to just have a strike and drop it right on Theta, try and get that kill. He got a hit in there, so he stopped. He got neutralized. And Hardak scores the kill on Arara, first to die on the Imperial side. Arc cheetah down. But Proton answers with a kill on the Night Gear on Legolas. So ton for ton, EMP is still up. 
We've got some beat up mechs on Imperial though as well. Heimdallite is pushing on the CT. Left. He's trying to push a little bit around the left, but playing very passive at this point. That's the right thing to do with that much damage. Proton, Twinkie, and Nova going hard in on Qbert in that Hunchback 2C and Zelaglock, and they're going to come around. And Nova getting in on Qbert, pinning him in the corner. Here come those machine guns. It's very difficult running on heat camp with those ER large lasers to try and fight off an Arctic Cheetah. Nova is just shredding through him. He's going to try and stop him, but he's got to give some support here. But they've got the Streak Huntsman now, Selleth now in the middle of those uh, hunchbacks. He gets Colonel O'Neill down. Hubert overheats, desperately attempting to get Twinkie. Twinkie does die. Hubert's still alive, somehow still alive, but he is one shot rear torso. Proton is right behind him. He might turn and try and get the shot, but he's concentrating on Chico right now. Taking a look at Hardock in that Wolfhound. He's there trying he to take on the Streak Mech. Actually disengages from Selleth and Streak Mech. Selleth is running Flamers on that Huntsman. So not only do you have Streaks coming in on those lights, but he's got Flamers as well. Nova with the jump over, getting in behind Chico and getting him on the ambush. Chico's going to turn around and try and get a hit on him. Proton we'll take a coming look at Nova's in. Cockpit right now. Proton is in the fight. Wailing on Chico right now. I'm sure his cockpit is rocking, and Nova attempting to get in behind him, forcing Chico to turn his back to Proton. And he's out of weapons. He created out all those weapons with that, those machine guns. Two mechs remaining. Hardock and the Wolfhound. He's now the target, the focus target of Proton and the others as well. Hardock does manage to to get Heimdallite down. Selleth is on the point. He is legged still, or he's he's dead. <laughs> Hardock manages to flip it, and he's working on Theta. 500 tickets, and they looks like they might. Oh, but Bowser punishes Hardock, coming in behind him, and puts him down. So no cap, and another kill on Chico. Bowser doing fantastic. He is open CT, but he could take a few shots, and he's flipping Theta back. Only one mech remaining, and it looks like he's playing the cap game. Yeah, Dorad is playing the cap game right now, but it's just not going to be enough. And they have Nova alive, the other Arctic Cheetah, who is back capping. So they're going to have a four to one cap, and that's going to flip the tickets back in favor of Imperial pretty quick. And there's still a lot of firepower right in the middle of the field. Unlike Canyon Network, where trying to outrun your opponent and getting those caps, you, you have a lot of cover when you're going from cap to cap. This one, I'm sure those mechs in the middle of the field, they're probably watching out for Da Red to cross. They, they might be able to get a shot or two in. It's going to be a risky move. And the map's just so big, it takes so much longer to get to the cap points in the first place. Absolutely. Dot Red is able to slip past, and he's going to work on Epsilon. He should be able to flip it unopposed, but it was fully capped, which means it's going to take even longer for him to flip that back in his favor. And as long as he's sitting there trying to flip it, the tickets are starting to slip back in favor of Imperial. I don't think he's going to be able to pull this one off. What do you think? Absolutely not. There's just uh, it's, there's too many mechs for Imperial on the field. They're too big. They're too fresh. And right now they're closing in on Dored as he's still trying to grab that cap point. They just didn't hold off long enough to try for that cap strat again. And here comes Proton. He wants to put Dored down. Going in aggressively, keeping the pressure on Andy. Takes it down. So Imperial on the redrop comes back in and is man manages an eight to four victory. It's so a little bit closer. It but was definitely still a little bit closer, but again, Imperial cleaned it up. Ooh. Proton, four kills, 799 damage in a Dragon 5N. Did you imagine seeing a Dragon 5N today? I did not. <laughs> they I would not have guessed that we don't. either. Yeah, they, they, they figured something out. Lizzie in the Battlemaster 1G, 638, very respectable for that play, but again, the damages across the board just that much higher for EMP. I mean, Proton, 800 damage and an 8v8 is astounding. Absolutely. That is and he is very good with ballistics. I mean, yeah. I've seen him use one of every single weapon, ballistic weapon in the game on a single mech at, at once and still just pull like yeah. massive amounts of damage with it. He, he knows how to lead his targets very well. He puts his things, his shots right where they belong. You're not just shooting at a mech. He's shooting and hitting individual components because that's yeah. what he needs to do to, to get the job done. And he's that good. He can, he can do it.
And it so. goes back to, again, what we saw all game, and we saw it when we were watching Proton, too. He plays that dragon. All your weapons are in your right arm. He plays that dragon with his right arm as far to the left as he possibly can aim with as much of his mech between that right arm and wherever he's getting shot from. I mean, that's just that's the, the technical side of, of competitive play, right? It's like seeing Nova protect his leg so that even when he overheats, the leg is always being protected by a dead leg if in, the, in that event. You know, seeing a Proton always twisting, a, a twisting his uh, right arm as far to the left as he can to keep his mech constantly focused towards, you know, in between the weapons that he has and the enemies on the field. You just add that up over time. Every, every player is so accurate, so controlled for Imperial. It's tough to beat. And that is a pretty tough skill to master. I know I can't do that effectively. Yeah. And just the visually, that Dragon's got such a big front, and then he plays arms unlocked, and he's shooting across his body like yeah. that with his torso turned. So you try to take that arm off, and you can't even see it. It's you tough to do. It. It's like he's shooting through the nose of his mech. Yeah. And it's hard to do, but he can do it, and he does it effectively. Exactly. But I'll tell you what, why don't we uh, go over to Phil, and we're going to hear a little bit from the team captain. <laughs> 